Ladies and gentlemen, this is America almost nuked the moon. Project A19, A119 by the channel of the Fatrician. I think they realized America is trying to think of doing this and I'm guessing they just like immediately made the space, space treaty. Fuck it. America is not going to stop after two nukes so we should like say like nobody can touch the space with the nukes. Yeah, so I think I watched, which channel was that? I think I watched one of the videos on this. I forgot the name of the channel, I think long ago, I don't know, like multiple years ago. I'm pretty sure I watched the video on this. I don't remember much from it, so it's still going to be interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, Fatrison doesn't normally cover projects, you know, videos like this. Uh, this is like, this is unique in its like thing, right? Nowadays, it's like mostly like military stories, this and that something something happened this was like a year or two ago this video so yeah i don't know uh, what was that channel i keep forgetting the name of the channel but yeah there are many stories like this but this doesn't, this doesn't feel like fat attrition type of story but yeah it's still gonna be interesting let's watch it remember if you like my reaction don't forget to subscribe so i know which type of videos to react to more check out the reaction there's a link in the description check out the end card you can really help out the channel by helping the algorithm that way and yeah let's watch it <laughs> Today we're talking about the time that America wanted to nuke the moon. But first, this video is brought to you by JX Tactical. They make a holster for everybody. Everybody. For example, I look like one of the anonymous henchmen from the Spy Kids movies. So I prefer their trademarked fat guy holster. So if you have a body and you're looking for a holster, I would recommend JX Tactical. Okay, back to the story. Ladies and gentlemen, almost one decade... The story. Ladies and gentlemen, for a holster, I would... Is that him? I think because of the cap and glasses, I can't really know it. I don't know. I would recommend JX Tactical. Okay, back to the story. Ladies and gentlemen, almost one decade before Neil Armstrong would take one giant leap for mankind, America almost made one giant yeet out of spite. You see, it all started on October 4th, 1957, when the Soviet Union launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik 1. And because they did it before America, America pretty much lost all of its chill. This would come to be known as the Sputnik Crisis. America would pretty much immediately found NASA as well as DARPA. And a short four months later, on January 28th, 1950... Yeah, I don't think America even had the priority of anything space-related, right? Soviet Union is like with the you know rocket formula and everything they tried to like experiment with that right and the first Sputnik wasn't just something it was an intercontinental continental ballistic missile obviously America didn't have that because Russia was lit that was the literally first time they were doing it so they can literally reach any part of the planet e even North America through that so Sputnik was most like a I don't know like a we can do this type of thing on your face type of thing it wasn't just some achievement oh we are on space you know like oh every, everybody just gather around look at the tv we achieved something yay for the country it wasn't that it was like a flex i can get to you now through space so america's like screw that it's like darpa nasa i just went fully insane and that short period of time was so insane because of that apollo program a lot of like environmental agency also get founded around that because now everybody's America's looking at Earth through space eyes, let's just say. So this they saw a lot of things differently. So a lot of things gets founded around the same time. But basically it started with Sputnik because it wasn't just some like, oh out of spite now to be first. No, it was like a defense challenge, right? Get Rus uh, Soviet Union can get to us. Now we have to do something to get to them. They would put their first satellite into outer space known as Explorer 1. Sure, getting your country's first satellite into outer space in like four months is pretty impressive. However, it was the second satellite in outer space, which means nobody cares. If you ain't first, you're last. You know, don't talk about Even though America had made great strides in the space race, as far as the world was concerned, they were still losing. So America had to do something to change their mind, something to get the spotlight back on America and also scare the Soviet Union. So they asked the United States Air Force what they thought. And their first suggestion was to nuke the moon and make a mushroom cloud so big that you could see it from Earth. You know, you can't lose a race to the moon if there is no moon. That's just math. So just so we're all on the same page, the United States government asked the Air Force what they should do about this problem. And the United States Air Force took a moment to think. They looked at the Soviet Union, saw that they were going to land on the moon first, and then looked up at the moon and said, So you have chosen death. Just for the sake of clarity, they what? didn't want to like blow the moon. So you chosen death. Is that where it comes from? Lord of the Rings? I didn't know that. Damn. Moon up like the moon would be gone, but they did want a new crater that you could see from Earth. And this is the part where I want to tell you the government came back and said, that's ridiculous. We're not doing that. And that was the end of it. Nah. 
That's not what happened. Instead, they gathered 10 of the world's best scientists and began work on what is now known as Project A119. You know, they really wanted to hit that sweet spot between creating a big enough mushroom cloud and not yeeting the moon out of the Earth's orbit, subsequently killing everyone. Okay, so the smart guys did all the math and all the thinking, and the official plan they came up with- In order to like, kick the moon's trajectory in any ways, like you need significant enough uh, d during this time, did they have like thermonuclear bombs or did they just uh, 1949? I don't know exactly. Did they have like thermonuclear bomb by now? It can be, right? So they had like those uh, fission bombs, right? The one they dropped at Japan. You need a lot of bombs like that. Way too many bombs if you want to even think about like messing the trajectory of the moon. With if they were going to go through with it, was they were going to take the W-25 warhead, stick it on an ICBM, and launch it at the moon. Buh! ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, and the moon isn't a continent, so that doesn't work. Buh. <sighs> Fine, you know what? I hereby declare the moon is the eighth continent of the planet Earth, and I hereby assign Brandon Herrera to rule over it. There, you happy? Moving on. Alright, so the scientists got this whole mission figured out. I mean... ICBMs are only called, uh... ICBMs because relation to what you're trying to do you're trying to attack somebody in another continent so it's called ICBMs like intercontinental ballistic missile the whole point is it can fly long it can go to space and come back to earth because that's the range of it so of course it can go to the moon why not so yeah and they were ready to go. Thankfully, they decided not to do it. There's a plethora of potential reasons and they never actually said why for sure. So I'm just gonna rattle some of those off. One, there was a fear that the general public would be pretty pissed off. Two, there was a fear that if the rocket malfunctioned before it broke the atmosphere, it would plummet back down to Earth and detonate. Three, they didn't want to contaminate the moon with radiation to prevent any future missions. I mean, Four, at this point in time, they still thought there might be a potential for cellular life on the moon and if there was, they didn't want to kill it. And five, and what I think to be the most likely reason, due to the lack of atmosphere, the nuclear bomb would not actually generate a mushroom cloud it would yeah. just be a flash personally i like to think as soon as the air force heard that they declared the whole idea lame and destroyed all the evidence and moved on with life or so they thought you see they destroyed i mean mm, yes there won't be any mushroom cloud slowly moving it would be like relatively fast flash but as the flashes go i mean come on we really gonna pass on the thing like oh that's the moon and that's the flash that was us like but then again, like they didn't have that much powerful nukes back then, so how big of a flash it would be, right? If you like Castle Bravo type uh, nukes, if you like combine them, multiple bombs or something like make a big one, throw it at the moon, just enough so it doesn't fuck up the moon in any way, and that flash would be big, so I don't know. <laughs> what, what they really, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, because of NASA and things, right? Yeah, it makes sense that they would be like, whoa, 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 we need the moon. What you talking about? You can't bomb it most of the evidence. You see, all this work was done on eight separate research papers, seven of them were destroyed, one of them survived. But nobody would have ever found it if it wasn't for the fact that of the 10 scientists that did all this work, one of them was actually a graduate student by the name of Carl Sagan. If you don't know who that is, he would go on to become a pretty big deal in the science community and become very famous. Famous enough to have a biography, and when the author of that biography was doing research, they stumbled across an application for a scholar. He's not just famous, he's like one of the most famous scientists. That's the point. Scientists are not the one who just like flex in media at all, like any meaningful communicative way. Carl Sagan was first. Carl Sagan was the guy who just constantly went to like uh, Carl jo Johnny. Who, who was the fucking name? I forgot. Like first proper like late late show host, right? Johnny Carlson. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. He was constantly there. Just basically how Neil deGrasse Tyson is doing now. He was doing it then, but he was alone. Nowadays, a lot of people are doing it. He was literally the first. Right? He was the guy who just like went to the public. He was a PR agent, let's just say. PR guy for the science. Which is like, feels smaller, but it's not. It's like a celebrity level thing. Right? Yeah, everybody saw him as like the best scientist guy ever. Because for them, it was. Like, now it is like Neil deGrasse Tyson is not the best scientist. But anybody think of scientists right now, they will basically think of him. Why? Because he's the PR guy. He's the guy who's constantly on the news, constantly on the lit so and everywhere. Basically, he's a celebrity scientist. Uh, Carl Sagan was first of that. 
scholarship to UC Berkeley where Carl Sagan mentioned this project. I'm not gonna lie, I really wanna see that application. Like Eagle Scout, 500 hours of volunteer service, I had an internship with the DOD to blow up the fucking moon. And why was this guy applying for scholarships anyways? He's one of 10 people on the planet you trust to shoot a nuke at the moon and you're not gonna throw him a bone so he can finish out his doctorate? Anyways, this scholarship application will lead to a Freedom of Information Act request and the one surviving research paper from Project A119 would be released to the public in the early 2000s. And this is the part where I'm supposed to tell you do not mess with America because we are crazy enough to blow up the moon and potentially endanger all of mankind just to prove a point. And that's exactly what I would say if it wasn't for the fact that in 2010 the former Soviet Union, now in a hurry government, released their secret documents basically saying they plan to do the exact same thing. It is truly an utter miracle that mankind made it through the Cold War. I guess the silver lining is that we've advanced enough as a species to quit doing dumb shit with nuclear warheads. <laughs> give, me the, give me the fast way. The fast way is, is drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. God damn it. Okay, well, thanks for watching, I guess. Go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out. I mean, the pole thing makes sense because of the, like, basically water, right? If you do that, the water evaporates. There's a chance it could create. I mean, I feel like there's many unknowns there, so we don't know, but there's a chance it could... Uh, create atmosphere, um, it won't create atmosphere, there is no magnetic field, this is basically about Mars. Well, you know, it could create a system, there could be water, I don't know. The radiation might be relatively low, I don't know. But yeah, there won't be, there won't be any atmosphere, I don't know what they even think about that, there is no magnetic field in Mars. If you're not in a magnetic field, you're not stopping a lot of radiations, like every type of interstellar, uh, interplanetary, all type of radiation coming from the distance, you're not stopping that. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, obviously Soviet Union also had plan of that. Soviet Union was like, people forget like how Soviet Union was. They were trying to, I mean, the Soviet Union versus USA. Soviet Union was first at ICBMs. That's what the Sputnik was. I think it took like another two or so years before USA came up with ICBM as well. Yeah. So Soviet Union was trying to do first a lot. So it's not surprising to me that they think like, oh, what if we nuke the moon? But yeah. All right, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe and yeah, I'll see you next time.